And so it goes that I have two copies of September. How does that work? Has anybody had two Octobers? I have one of each. chime in or are you okay with No, I have nothing, sir, about this one. All right, thank you. Any members of the board wish to ask any questions of the uh, all right. Any members of the I'll open it for public uh, comment. Any uh, members of the public wish to comment on this particular issue? All right. Seeing no interest, I'm going to close the public comment. Um, so at this time, I think it would be appropriate to have a vote as to whether or not we're going to uh, amend the previous supply approved application. I make a motion to amend the previous approved outline. Okay. Okay. Uh, second. Yeah. Okay. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed nay. Uh, uh, ayes have it. Uh, congratulations. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you too. We'll think about like. Um, the trust. Um, I believe so. I'll check. We'll be in touch if not, but I think so. Sure thing. All right. Next on the agenda is uh, Lawrence Sustainable Development and the uh, waiver request. If they want to come forward and great. Says that, that uh, uh, 
Um, we had specific building sites that we had picked, um, as, as we would typically do in, in a open space or cluster type subdivision, but the length of our road was constrained by the existing structures here, and therefore our, our ability to get coverage on that was, was limited. Oh, and Ms. Phil, I apologize for interrupting. I wonder if way you could put that up so that the members of the public can look at it. You could see also, and I apologize for having an interview presentation. Uh, yeah, so the, the length of the road was, was somewhat limited. So these have uh, uh, narrow necks out to the building sites, which uh, we consider as, as uh, uh, full truck lots. So that's our, our waiver request. And again, a couple of small revisions. Uh, we took off a note that was on sheet SB1, and we did something to sheet S1 as well. Um, Yes, it is. Item one. I item, item one. So, I have it right here. Oh, thank you. The uh, item one, not a building lot. The open spaces were identified as not a not a buildable lot uh, to make sure that nobody was out there trying to draw a building firm to put, put a house up. So those were the two the two uh, plan revision issues. We also left with with the need to get um, the, the appropriate sign-offs on the water system, of, of which both the, the state and uh, the, the Water Commission have, have sent their letters of approvals. And uh, Mike is also working on the, the protective covenants and the language for the easements. Kevin Baum was working with Caroline directly. I know that he sent her. I think she wanted to see legal description of the easement <coughs> and um, I know that Kevin Kevin got to you directly with the uh, easement language that you asked for and some I think you wanted in the protective covenants that those lots weren't buildable as well the, the um, yes. common areas and so I acknowledge that I have um, I remember seeing the covenants I don't remember seeing the easement um, language which doesn't mean that I didn't receive it um, I have not reviewed those and so um, I would say as long as it addresses what this board's concerns were I don't know that that should hold up anything if Tom and Michelle particularly don't have any concerns about that um, but I think we were really explicit with what the purpose and need for those was. It's up to this board whether or not you want to see them because I have to admit that I was remiss in not passing them along. So this board did not get the chance to see them yourselves. So I think that if if, if uh, the applicant agrees that it will be it'll address the concerns plus it's being added to the plans. Not saying that it isn't necessary, but that it, it is something that's forthcoming in the works, and also, you know, we did make the change. I understand, but I'm sure it's she has it. It's just a, um, knowing that that is a deal stopper. If it doesn't get addressed, I'm sure that that yeah, okay. I feel comfortable that the applicant will proceed properly. So, so has Tom and Michelle seen that language or not? Aha! My apologies. So Michelle and Tom have not seen it either. Um. But um, regardless, I think, um, I mean, we all know that it's been done. I think, if anything, the board can move forward to approve it with the condition that that get reviewed by board members and any concern that be addressed subsequent. But I don't think it's a real issue. And just following up on that, so there was an issue, there was a part of the, the thing we just discussed before saying fee isn't terribly descriptive, but was the idea of uh, all the deeds having a uh, language, um, waiving the right to ZBA process. Uh, process. Is that, does anyone know if that's been included in the, in the? What I did was I took the covenants and I added in that no further variances can be um, requested and that the common lots cannot be buildable, will never be construed as buildable lots, and that each unit owner 
will own a percentage, a seventh of the common, so that you have that tax. That was one of those leverage. things. Too, uh, all three of those things were done, and then I gave it to Kevin Baum, um, and he tightened it up, made sure it was done correctly, and got it to you. And we didn't hear back, so. No, you didn't. I know you didn't. Um. <laughs> but of course, if the further modifications, um, you know, I, I think I, we definitely addressed the three issues you brought up. I know we did. So if I could just ask Tom and Michelle, do you have any concern in, is it enough to um, have the restriction to um, limiting um, their access to the ZBA process in the covenant and in the plan, or is there a reason to require that also in the deed? Interesting, was in the deed? No, um, I said that the deeds are each gonna reference that they have a portion ownership of the common land, right. and that the common land is not um, buildable. As far as, no further variances. We weren't sure 100% if it's even legal to pre-tell somebody that you can never ask for a variance, but we put it in the covenants, and, and the covenants are referenced. Yeah. And the covenants are referenced in each deed. I mean, they have to accept um, the covenants the homeowners association to yeah. own, so it, we did do it. <laughs> I think having them in the covenants is sufficient. I don't think it has to be it's on the plan, spelled so. out in each deed, because each Okay, then each owner will be getting the deed. The, the, the covenants are referenced in the deed. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. All right. Just like the hundred feet no cut that you asked us to put in, as yeah. far as the water yeah. frontage goes, is in the covenants, which is referenced in the deed. Yeah. And it, it's the first thing we do before we would accept any offers is make sure that people sign on on the covenants. Sure. Um, right. Thank you. Now, do any board members have any questions based upon this about this particular issue we're discussing? Uh, Um, so the next thing I'd like to hit as we're moving along here is um, the water pressure issue. So um, looking back at October, our October 1st um, meeting minutes, um, it looks like that we, so one of the final, item, final items was state approvals for water pressure and expansion of water district picture of the plans of eight inch water mains. Uh, so as I read this, it's, um, or I believe I read somewhere, we're waiting for state approval and water district approval. I know we have a lot of, they're from the water and sewer district. Do we have state approval? And yes. I'll ask that if it's Tom. Um, do we? Uh, not that I've seen. I haven't seen no. yeah, that, that was, that was uh, We did call it that. Um, But the state did approve it, <coughs> and I can resend it if you like, but I know we did. Okay. Bob sent it and copied, copied me. Okay, so the, the other thing we talked about was um, some kind of certification engineering stamp that says that the addition of those homes would not be a detriment to the pressure of the existing homes in the district. So. so We've hired two companies. And the, the second one, upon the water district's request, um, Wright Pierce, mm -hmm. and they did do a, a three-page report that um, calls that out. You didn't get that either? Um, I'm not going to comment on okay. this. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm past. The first thing we do is give you, and then when we don't hear back, we kind of just. Fair but enough. I have it here with us, but they did. Um, you can pass it. So this, this is um, their report where they, they took existing information from two different items and, and then interpolated at the end of the project what the what the conditions would be there. To, and that and that's what the state made their decision of approving based on. We first had to get this and then we gave it to the state and then the state gave us that and then we forwarded them both to you. Okay. But it does it does do that. Conclusions and recommendations are exactly that if you don't want to read that. So I'm just going to, I want to cross my, uh, dot my, so one of the things we have here is a October 14, 2019 letter from the Department of Environmental Services, the state of New Hampshire to uh, Vernon Cross here, I may have crossed that correctly, Commissioner Rollsford Water and Sewer District, in regard to the Victoria Point subdivision, <coughs> saying that uh, NHDES Drinking Water and Groundwater Bureau has reviewed 
and hereby approves the subject design plans received October 2nd, 2019 from the subdivision, subdivision developer, Tritech Engineering Corporation for the district's expansion of water service to seven new residential units off of Silver Street. This approval is subject to the following one compliance with ENV DW404 design standards for large public water systems for all new construction, including conformance to AWWA standards, notification of this office upon completion of construction, and submittal of electronic copy of record drawings backslash as built upon completion of the project, signed by Cynthia M. Clevens, uh, PE. So, um, can someone, does someone represent that um, in terms of the first item, compliance with EMV hyphen DW404 design standards has been met? You agree, uh, Tom? Yes. It's been met? Yeah. Okay. Anybody on the board have any questions regarding this letter that I just read? Is this uh, Wright Pierce uh, report in the record already or no? Um, no, because I didn't really get it. Okay. I think you talked about having somebody do it, but I never. We brought one company that did it, and the water commissioners recommended using yeah. this company. In the minutes, it does note that you were hiring somebody to do yeah. it, and that you, you consulted two firms as well. That's the second one. So that for the board and for the uh, public, so this is a uh, memorandum from Wright Pierce dated September 26, 2019, and it says in regard to the uh, proposed project, the conclusions on recommendations, one, based on the information available and assumptions made above, the Rollinsford distribution system can meet the domestic water demands of the proposed development and the proposed subdivision does not negatively impact the pressures on Silver Street. Two NHDES water system design guidance recommends a minimum water main diameter of eight inch distribution system. Further modeling would need, be needed if the subdivision increased the water main size. We recommend that Walter Walk, excuse me, fire park quantify the need, needed fire flows to the development of conformance with town standards and approvals. Uh, has the Rollinsford Fire Department? Uh, they have not seen that. They have, haven't they seen this one. Yeah, what is it? There's a response from the fire department. Did from the first test. test. From the, uh, based on the first pressure yeah, test. I, guess, I, I do not. That was the email that. Uh, who sent this email? I don't, I don't recall. <laughs> I, I, I recall an email exchange about the fire department's response to the first flow test. Which I think came up the same as the, I might be able to find it. It came after this was submitted, so I thought it was based on this. I don't think so, because I don't think that, they, that I forwarded that to anyone, because I would have reviewed it myself before I had done so. Tom, any, I guess I'm a little bit uh, concerned about this issue. Uh, can you yeah, I, I provide think, some guidance there? Yeah, I think initially, um, when you're writing about <coughs> them saying the assumptions above, I think that's the typical wiggle room that engineers like to do. I, I don't really have any concern about that. And I'm pretty confident that with that, as well as the district report, um, the DES, um, I'm sure that the flow test will come out. The, the Rollins flow test um, for the fire department will, will be adequate. I don't see how all of this.
this stuff could happen and then not have adequate control. Okay. And, and, and given that the fire department didn't have a concern with the first flow test, I think it would be fair to make um, their approval a condition of approval, but I don't think that that would be a hindrance no. because I agree that it's likely not an issue at this point. And uh, just following up on this line of thought, Ms. Stoll, you said there were two studies, is that right? The, the uh, relative to the water, Mike initially had the uh, first flow test done, which again addressed. Uh, the water commissioner asked me to go to Nick Construction, and Nick Construction gave me this water pressure company that they said does all their certification. So I got that report, which I submitted to you. And I think afterwards it came up that this other firm has your modeling and everything right in their software and that it would have been preferable had I have gone to them. So uh, there was like a quick apology and asked me to go that route. So we've done it twice. But you know, both letters say it's sufficient. I mean, the, the good news is that they, they do. And two and different and engineers have said the same thing. And again, the fir first time around it, it addresses the existing conditions and does have readings of 860 to 900 gallons a minute, um, which is certainly adequate for, for fire, fire flow, but, but it didn't address proposed conditions, which, again, because uh, right the model it has a model, the, the business, the, the, the drawings could model, they were able to take some of the data, they redid this test, they took that data, put it in their model, determined that it was acceptable, um, wouldn't, wouldn't they So can you see that letter? I, okay. And I think you represented we may have seen it before. This but, one I yeah, think. Tom, have you read it? Yes. Read it. Yeah, I, that one was from a, And I think so too. So I just kind of again read this into the record. So uh, this is by a September 4, 2019 letter from the testing and coring company on August 23, 2019 in Rollinsburg, New Hampshire, at the intersection of Silver and Short Street. The flow test was static. Residual reading at upward directional hydrant was performed at approximately 1 p.m. with readings of 860 to 900 gallons per minute with a sustained sidewall pressure of 28 pounds sine, or 28 pounds CSI per square inch with a static pressure at upper hydrant of 65 pounds per square inch plus residential pressure, residual pressure, quote, underflow of quote, of 45 pounds per square inch. This those would be considered favorable pressure for both domestic use and fire protection. So I'd like that to go on the record too. It's not already in the record. Um, all right, so does any members of the board at this point have any questions for the applicants? Okay. And also, Michelle, do you have any comments on this? No, I think that's fine. It's a approval. Okay, as a condition of approval? All right. Uh, all right, thank you. So, um, and forgive me, I'm just going to go over some of the prior notes here and minutes. Uh, and again, Tom, uh, the qu question on sheet SP1 describing the different type, the types of housing you built, that's been resolved. Yes. Um, the issue about the drainage easement language being added to the plans and the eight, the homeowners association documents, that's been resolved, Tom? Right, we have that, yes. Okay. Um, and and uh, the, again, if I'm repeating myself, I apologize. The plans show eight inch water uh, mains throughout. Is that correct, Tom? Yes. All right, I'm just gonna go back to the prior So I think the next portion uh, of the hearing is going to be uh, the public hearing on the issue of a waiver request being asked by Lawrence Development regarding uh, pork chop lots. Uh, pork chop lots sort of, as the name implies, uh, describes a uh, design of a lot that, as I understand it, is prohibited by our regulations. However, 
uh, the applicant has <coughs> included it as it uh, would, uh, for two lots, I believe, as it would uh, create more open space. Uh, does any members of the public have any questions on that? Do Tom or Michelle have any comments on that issue? Um, my comment is I read the waiver request, and I think the main concern that we have, that I have, um, says in the regulations that we do not approve, uh, we, we uh, do not permit pork chop lots, but they're not defined anywhere, and there are no regulations describing them. And I think that's something we'll probably speak to later. But for now, to um, have this waiver request, and it does, I think it meets the provisions of the waiver request in the uh, in the ordinance. So I don't have any issues any longer. They've, okay. They've submitted the information necessary, I think, for the board to approve the request. Right. And Michelle, do you have any comments on that, or? I didn't officially say the public hearing was closed on that issue, but I think it um, it is. All right, so at this point, do any members of the board have any other comments they'd like to make about either the waiver request or the application in general? I, I just think on the pork chop lots, um, you know, I, I think you have to deal with what you have for billable area, keeping open space at a premium. And this is different than someone perhaps building a pork chop lot Road. This is a subdivision, you know, which has confinement. So, um, with or without the definition of a pork chop lot, I think that uh, it's viewed as being the fairest use of the land, and that uh, you know care is being taken to um, provide the best overall in the town view as well. So, I have, I have no problem with pork chop lots. All right. So. Um, Again, I admit that I'm not the most uh, knowledgeable chairman, but I believe at this point um, it would be appropriate to vote on the application. I would say let's um, vote on the waiver request. The waiver request first. All right, all right, thank you. So the first, next item will be, uh, would anyone like to make a motion to either approve or disapprove the waiver request in regard to uh, Lorax Sustainable Development and Victoria Point and the uh, pork chop lots? I motion to approve. All right. I'll second it. We were just talking about the waiver for the waiver. Yes. We're not talking about any approval conditions or anything like that. Right. Okay. So we're just talking about All right. So all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Uh, the ayes have it. All right. So next we would vote on the application. Right. Yeah. And anyone feel free to say differently? I think, yeah, I think we would. Uh, uh, we need to make sure we have our conditions. Articulate really the conditions. Okay. Yeah. So. There are going to be a few. Um, what, one of which is, I would say, we, we have to make sure that we reconcile all of the um, the professional fees. Um, you, you have paid some to that, but I know that we've also had some expenses to that, and we need to make sure that we're aligned and you may have fees due. And so we should check that off the list before there's any approval. Um, and then there's the um, covenants checking the covenants and the um, final review of those. the easement language to make sure that that's congruent with the board's desire fire department and making sure that we get a letter from or some kind of approval from the fire department on the pressure on the water pressure all right so am i missing anything tom I don't michelle think so. So I would move that we grant the subdivision application, that we approve the subdivision application with those three conditions. I'll second that. All right. Um, all in favor, uh, say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. Great. Thank so, you. Uh, Thank congratulations. You. Thank you both for your patience in this process. I know it's been uh, a long one. Welcome to
Very excited. It's all important stuff. I'll be honest with you. It's none of it that wasn't appropriate. You have to understand what you're doing. Uh, you have an estimated groundbreaking on anything other than existing buildings? I know yeah, it's a lot of site work, but... The, the goal would be to stack the road, um, not be able to pave it, but to stack the road next month. Um, really, to the way? Probably Brown Industrial Group, yeah. Thank you. Um, please do talk to our road agent and make <laughs> sure that we're there to watch what you're yep. doing, There's or J. 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 Stevens, or, you know, somebody's got to watch the development of the road at every... I'm going to talk way. to you a little bit about the truck process. The truck. Yeah, and just make sure you're you're dotting your eyes along the way so we're not doing core samples or something like that. Excellent. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you. Legal should almost be reviewed, um, and people that are professionals in the field to make sure that 
we're writing it according to what it needs to say. Especially when you're talking definition. Well, there's discretion. You know, I think you can take what other places write mm -hmm. and modify it for what works for us, such as, you know, the the um, the road frontage should not be any less than you know twenty percent of the length of the lot, or or the you know the lot can't be any more than five times the length of the width, or you know some kind of relative dimensional. But if we do a modification <coughs> that's going to go into you know such serious guidelines, I think don't you think it, it's sort of haphazard not to have reviewed by legal? Instance being a comment was made by the applicant saying that it's not he's not even sure it's legal that we can restrict any future option of the ZBA. Oh, the ZBA, that's completely different, and I, I just, and I don't disagree like with that. Some, the example being that you know if we're going to adjust or modify you know these regulations, I think that we need to be very sure that they're fair and, and legal. Well, so I mean, and I'm not just talking about definition of pork chop. I mean, well, I don't know if there's anything really major that we're looking at tweet from beyond that. That's that's next month. Um, so 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 to my mind, there are three different things. What requires a building permit? I would say that's completely discretionary to the municipality, and it can be whatever we want as long as it's defined. Um, pork chop law, I think, is pretty much the same too, but it might be informed by um, what makes sense and, and you would probably take into consideration why a pork chop lot is undesirable and prohibited in the first place but I don't think that there's any you know t typically zoning ordinances are not challenged on things like those definitions you define it and it, and it either is or it isn't it's, it's not defined it's surprising that we well so the coming up with a definition I think is, is the board's sort of discretion well, this whole other thing about whether or not we can take away somebody's right to the ZBA absolutely right that that is legally questionable. Right. However, they can try. I mean, you know. if, if the applicant doesn't want to spend their legal dollars to find out, it's not for us to determine right. for them. It's you know one of those things that's legal until somebody challenges it. And, and given the you know the, um, the how how much deliberation there was at the ZBA over the severity of infringing on the river setback that. You know, to my mind, you err on um, behalf of the public interest that you know has that setback and doesn't want to infringe upon it, and and let them have the burden of proof that you know yes they still have the right even though we've denied it, and and further that um, they should get a variance on top of that. I just think that's a huge legal lift. But for them to figure out, it just puts the legal burden on them right. rather than. Than us, they're the applicant. If they want it <coughs> in their interest, that's for them to spend the legal dollars. But that's a separate issue altogether than definitions and what we want to require. That's really up to a municipality's <coughs> discretion based on what's in the public interest. You know, what do we find with public input to be in the public's best interest, which can be informed by professionals, but. It's all about do you want to wait and spend the money, and is it worth waiting and spending the money for what a lawyer would say, which is probably sure whatever you want it to be that reflects the town's interests. We're, right, you know, we're only talking building permits and definition of culture. Right? I mean, so when you is get into something, else, is there anything else large pending that you think? I mean, because you're you're really in the pulse of the town that we need to address. So, so the one no, glaring no, one, you, well, so the one big elephant in the room, to my mind, that we haven't been talking about is that the master plan is way out of date. Getting older. And, and we're required to have it, and it's required to have certain chapters, um, but then there are other chapters that we could choose to have, but it's an interactive process um, that results in a document that reflects the values of the town in terms of what is Rollinsburg, what do we want it to be, and how do we want it to grow. And all of these conversations about what our regs should be should be, be should mirror the master plan, which is out of date. So I think that's the bigger issue, but you can work on that cha either chapter by chapter or as a whole, but either way is going to require 
resources and time and an interactive process with the public. So that's a separate whole thing. I've um, alerted to the select board to the need of that and the fact that it's out of date. Um, and, and my goal was to put an RFP out in 2020 to gauge the cost. Um, and then I would hope to budget for it in 21, depending on the cost, you know, maybe we can try to start working on it next year, but really budget for it in 21. So, you know, I wouldn't want us to, for example, completely rezone something that, that can really change the dynamic of the community. Like, I wouldn't want to, Based you know, on a dated master plan. Exactly. I mean, the master plan is something that we you know, because there was a yeah. while, you know, we, we've had some good runs at it, some people, you know, but uh, it has sort of fallen by the wayside. You know, a, a topic that we've discussed in the past is policing some of our other, our other peer food plans. Example being, I mean, this is a pretty involved plan, but something simple like, you know, a car repair shop on someone's off road, for example, hypothetically. Um, you know, we approve plans and we they call for, you know, no vehicle maintenance outside, certain paved areas, which, Still don't seem to ever happen. You know, we talked about policing. Oh, process like inspection process, Down enforcement the street, process. You've got, he's got the, you know, and I'm not identifying anyone, but you know, well, things uh, like this that we talk about that, um, you know, once they're said and done, and they're th they're through the, the select board, you know, and they've, they've got their COOs, and um, everybody's happy, but there's still some. Where is the master plan? And, and how big is this master plan? I don't, I'm, it's a binder in the select board's office. And that's it. Um, yes, and and you're welcome to we come. We had it digitally, and, didn't we? I'm sorry. We had it digitally, didn't we? We did, didn't we? Possibly. Just just oh, uh, various, I, various chapters. Well, okay. Various chapters. So I know that some chapters were revised, um, but they were never officially adopted, and I would be reluctant to advise that we adopt them, given that they were not revised with the public input. Process, Actually, which is what it's all about, isn't we it? Remember, we, you and I, and Glenn, when he left, remember, we, there was a revision of like a couple of chapters I mean, I, with I public of, hearing, really, with approval, with public hearing, a couple of years ago. Like, yeah. timeline. Is that reflected in the. No, well, the. the well, because they were not approved. Like, you have like oh, an approved version, and then some, some revisions took place, but they have to go to public. They have to go to they, public there was a public hearing. Yeah, they were like, 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 so like, 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 the way that we were meeting. doing it was yeah. like revising chapters. certain chapters yes. on a schedule so that it wasn't the whole thing all right. at once. Well, and right. the chapters that were revised, yeah, they were adopted, and there was a public hearing. Well, adopted, right. but I don't think this body can adopt them. I think they have to go to town meeting. I think they have to be approved at town meeting. Yes. yes. So I don't think they've been adopted because I think they have to go to town meeting. And I, I'll check on that, but... Um, I don't think so. I think that... Uh, I mean, I could well, be wrong, but I've done, I I've done we master plan we chapters for Wakefield. The, the, the planning board approved yeah. them, and then they were adopted. So I I could be wrong, but... So, so I'm still... Um, I, I think it's one thing to have a public hearing. I think it's another thing to have, you know, um, to survey the public or otherwise engage with the public about what do you want this to be. I don't know that that's a requirement. How do you propose that? I think the public hearing is that fulfills. Well, that it fulfills that requirement, but I guess, you know, it's up to the town if they want to like create a survey or have like more input. But some it's kind not of, a requirement. Well. Nonetheless, we have to figure out the master plan, whether or not these provision, you know, these chapters were adopted. Um, I don't think the whole thing is up to date. No, I think, I think because like, even if even if you're going on the schedule, there has to be chapters that are outdated because all the chapters have to be updated. I believe uh, ten years every yeah every ten years. Mm -hmm. So the ones that we revised a few years ago were up for revision. And I'm sure that there are more that are up for revision now. What was the last year we had Chairman Geraghty? Predates me. <laughs> <laughs> I remember Chairman Geraghty made a good run and didn't really get the good zone. And then, who was after Mike? Oh, it was Pat Macklin. Pat, he, he did a lot on it. Yeah. Pat was was it Charlie Putman? No, that, Charlie that was, was before Geraghty. Yeah. yeah. Um, but Pat was good on it. And then after Pat was... Miles. Well, Miles was 
very pretty. No, Caroline Kendall was very pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Miles was a year and a half. But I don't, did we do a lot then? No, no we didn't. Here, were you here then? With yeah. Miles? You were here. Yeah, like I, here I was here with Pat. With Miles. Um, for some of that, yes. Okay. As a citizen. But I don't think we did a lot those years. So no, the last revision like was with Pat. Pat, Pat, Pat and yeah. Pat and, yeah, and Mike. So, nonetheless, like, I, I think we need to just look <laughs> into like the situation and what we have. That's assess. But there was, there was some, yeah, I guess we have to find out where we stand. Right. We just said that. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I think we might want to look at, you know, bigger picture items, but I would want to see where we're at with the master plan before I would suggest that. Right, some of the chapters, there, there were some templates out there, there was some verbiage, there was some, I, I think that um, Krebs used to be able to capture, because he, he did some work on it for us, and I, I want to say he captured language from other towns, small towns. I, I'm, you know, I'm sure that he might have borrowed language from other towns for some of those. <laughs> Quite possibly. I think that's possible. Right, no, I mean, I'm sure to say, but I mean, and it, it was applicable to a certain extent. But that's what just for ease of like writing it out versus just cutting and pasting relevant. Because um, in my experience, like that's what you, you kind of forget. Like it's you're not reinventing the wheel. Right. It's a lot of times. However, you can, like, can I just interject here? Oh, oh please. <laughs>
I'm going to go back to one of my old topics, which is impact fees. Awesome. Um, because, and I have prepared. I don't know if John was, John Krebs was in favor, in favor, but maybe I'd like to hear the next meeting, uh, Tom and Michelle's thoughts on that sure. issue. So. They, they are in the zoning ordinance. They're just not something we do. We've discussed the administrative end of that, too. I know that Carolina said before that, she, that it was uh, being burdened some, I thought, I think, to some yeah. degree. But the structure of the town administration has changed a bit since well, that could be a discussion. Well, I, I admit less so, because we do have a bookkeeper now. And um, given that we have a bookkeeper, although I wouldn't say that we have as much administrative support as we need, it might be to the point where um, the, the benefit is, is worthwhile, particularly for um, something of, you know, an, an order of magnitude where um, we, it would be detrimental not to, I guess. So I think it's worth discussion. Sure. All right. Great. All right. All right. Um, yeah. So December 3rd. Is that workable for everybody? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Just remember, it's my birthday the following day. <laughs> Bring that day? Okay. Okay. Following Plan day. appropriate. Okay. <laughs> Bring the balloons. <laughs> Anything else on the agenda? Um, yes, there's a, con a conditional use permit. Uh, for an ADU on Rollins, on Rollins Road. There's new construction Road. on Rollins Road. Um, the home at the corner of Rollins Road and Clement, the big white farmhouse, oh, yeah. there's an empty lot before that on the right. Um, oh, yeah. and, and there's going to be a single family home there. They're looking to put an ADU in it. So they're coming to us for a conditional use permit. And then um, I was kind of surprised we did not get Mr. Phipps' application after his consultation at the last meeting um, for his. Um, home on his lot on Church and Lane. So I would expect that to come in. But I think that's all that we're aware of at this point. Great. Great. Okay. Good. Uh, uh, someone want a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you very much, everyone.